Hey everybody, this is uh, Rich from Train by Tex, and I am here to give you a short little quick diagnostic video on fixing my seat heaters. Probably not an issue as I am driving through West Palm Beach, Florida, but the next time I'm in Raleigh, I'm probably gonna need them. So a couple of days ago, Tom Oliva had a brilliant idea of recording short little videos. Not everything needs to be a uh, 45 minute to an hour diagnostic discussion. And I have a problem with my seat heaters that really kind of falls into line with what I'm teaching at Vision this year, which is electrical test tools and fundamental electric. Understanding what your tools can, and maybe even more importantly, cannot tell you and understanding the relationship, not the math, but the relationship between volts, ohms, and amps uh, can simplify your diagnostic process. So this short little video is how I approached fixing the seat heaters or diagnosing the seat heaters in my Sprinter. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you got a better idea, if there was a quicker way to go about this, please share it. I'm one of those guys that scream scan tool, scan tool, scan tool, use your scan tool, and I didn't hook up a scan tool to this car. I went another, another way. Uh, so uh, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching. Bye. All right, so let's take a look at the issue with the heated seats. This is the button for the passenger side heat seat. I hit it one time, all three lights light up for high, second time low, medium, third time low, and then off. The passenger seat works fine. Driver's seat, high, off, high, off. The driver's seat doesn't work. Looks like we have a problem. Let's take a look. Okay, so luckily the seat heater wiring is really easy to get to under the passenger seat. We have our uh, amp clamp hooked up to my whoop, U-scope and I'm gonna operate the passenger seat. It's our known good. Let's take a look and see what our known good does. So I hit it once. You can see the current spike up. Hit it a second time, and we see a duty cycle. Hit it a third time, and that duty cycle changes. I'll do it again really quick. Off, high, medium, low. Off. I'm not that worried about numbers. I'm just looking for the reaction of the amperage. How does it do its work? Now let's compare that known good to our driver's side. So I move the amp clamp over to the driver's seat heater circuit, and I'm gonna hit the button. Hmm, let's turn it off, let's try it again. Every single time I turn the seat heater on, there is a spike of current, and then it's immediately shut off. My assumption is, the driver, the module, whoever controls seat heater sees the current because when I turn it on, it's a spike considerably higher than the passenger seat and disables the seat heater. So the seat heater connector, two wires going in, four wires coming out. If I disconnect this, I hit the right button. It's two separate connectors. I can separate the back heater from the butt heater element. I could bust out the multimeter and check the resistance, but I'm lazy. Let's just disconnect these and hook one in and see what happens. So the connector comes apart and you can see I've left one unplugged, left one plugged in. Let's do our testing again, see exactly what we get. What's the chances I got the right one? 
Oh, there's our spike. And the button shut right off. Hit it again. Spike. Much higher than the passenger side. Let's switch those plugs. Okay. Plug is switched. Other heating element is plugged in. And now... Oh. we got current. Not as high as the passenger side, because circuit's only doing half the work, but let's hit it again. Oh, duty cycled. Different duty cycle. Off. One of my elements, which I'm sure is really expensive, needs to be replaced. And since nobody pays me to fix my own cars, it might be a while before that happens. But the point of this repair is... I don't know what the amperage was on the good one. I didn't look at numbers. I didn't calculate Ohm's law. I looked for a reaction. And when I saw the good reaction, I compared it to the driver's side and saw a different reaction. More amperage means less resistance. I've got a short. Just a matter of plugging and unplugging a couple of connectors and figuring out which seat heater element is dead shorted. I'm done. I know what's wrong with this car. Time to write up an estimate and give it to the cheapskate customer. So I want to say one quick little thing about this U-Scope. I've had it for about a, a year now. Get them from AES Wave. They're inexpensive. It has become my go-to for quick diags like what I just did. I owned this thing for a year and I loved it. And then I remember Justin Morgan's videos. He has two videos covering the basics and the advanced features. And I would highly recommend if you have a U-Scope, go watch those videos. I was amazed at all of the presets and other things it could do beyond just simple testing like I had been doing myself. So uh, absolutely amazing and worthwhile tool. And I highly recommend uh, you grab one, add it to your uh, diagnostics arsenal. That's it.